A couple of months back, I saw the Netflix documentary, The King Who Never Was, about the killing of Dirk Hammer on August the 8th, 1978, by the son of the last king of Italy, the Prince Vittorio Emanuele of Savoy who was 41 at the time, and th he murdered the young German Dirk Hammer in his sleep, and was only 19 at the time, because the entire House of Savoy, and especially the last Italian king of Italy, collaborated with the Duke of Mussolini and his fascists during the Second World War. The King of Italy got extradited from Italy. Persona non grata, as they say. So here again, it's the internal war sort of in between the old world order, the king, which is a vertical rule, and the republicans. You know, the parliamentary system, parliamentary system, uh, which is a horizontal rule, and they kicked him out. It was not the people. You know. Where's the people? They're just dumb slaves. Yeah. So the king here is the father <clears throat> of, the, um, of the killer prince. So here we see Adolf. I mean, it's all aristocracy. Right? This one, Il Duce which means the duke. He was living in a castle, and his wife was an aristocrat. Adolf Hitler, he was always walking around with a, uh, the statue of Nefertiti, Queen Nefertiti of Pharaohs, and a painting of Frederick the Great. So it must be clear he's of the higher nobility, as his grandfather in Vienna, whom he never knew, Frankenberger. Um, he was, uh, of course, a part of the um, the upper nobility, and the real name of the of his family was Schickelgruber, and they gave him the name Hitler. Also, this guy Rudolf Hess, he flew to the Scottish nobility, the Duke of Hamilton. And the Duke of Hamilton, he uh, was part of the Scottish equivalent of the Order of the Garter. And um, I don't think he spent the rest of his life in prison. Of course he didn't. You know, these guys never do. And then Himmler, he also had his castle called the Wevelsburg, next to Paderborn in Germany, where they have a uh, this... Um, uh, this occult symbol of the black sun on the, um, because the Nazi Templars, you know, the, and the Templars, they were occultists, what they have from Pharaoh. So, <clears throat> his son killed the, um, killed the young German Dirk Hammer. So here it says the killer prince. So he's the son of the last king of Italy, whom you just saw with Mussolini and Hitler. And therefore, the killer prince of Pharaoh's house of Savoy was living in Corsica, France, where I have been filming for you 10 years ago, helping the Corsican Liberation Front. The videos can still be seen on my channel Gatsafrats here. So here's the title, and this is 10 years ago. And on my channel Gatsafrats, there's several videos I did in Corsica, together with the Corsican Liberation Front. So here it says, Swiss neutrality is for the elite only and not 
for you dumb slaves. And as always, to understand the actual situation and what really happened, we must dig deep into history and how Switzerland, as usual, is deeply involved in it all. So here is the Wikipedia about the Duchy of Savoy. And also Geneva was part of uh, the Duchy of Savoy, as you can see here. Look, and in their coat of arms, they even have a Swiss cross here. Or here, their flag. It's definitely a Swiss cross. Well, I mean, if you look at the... Um, if you look at the map here, I mean, it's uh, Switzerland is here, you know, and it's uh, it's like glued onto Switzerland, right? And um, so there are parts like here. It has a. Um, I mean, here you can see Nice is in it. And it was also a part of the Holy Roman Empire, as you can read here. So I'll let you read the rest. Yeah. Or you can find it yourself. So the Duchy of Savoy lasted 450 years from 1416 till 1860 and was part of the Holy Roman Empire, which was in fact a German empire. I hope you remember my video on the Holy Roman Empire and where the seven end times hills have to be simultaneously seven kings, and which happens to be the case in Switzerland. Die sieben Kurfürsten. So you can see that in this video here on my channel Homeland Security, the title Helvetic Horror Heidi, one year ago, which will teach you a lot more on the Holy Roman Empire because it's very important, because it has so much in common with the Duchy of Savoy and its killer princes and we can all see the swiss cross in the coat of arms of the duchy of savoy so here's the switzerland a white cross on a red underground and here it says savoy written in french savoy which is the same area as the duchy of savoy a white cross on a red underground and well, part of Switzerland used to be the Duchy of Savoy, and it's it's right next to, glued next to Switzerland. It's it's the same, you know. So here's a map of Europe. Here's England, Ireland, France, Spain, Germany, Belgium. Here's Switzerland, and here is the in the southeast of France and and. Uh, the west of northwest of Italy in a part of Switzerland was the Duchy of Savoy. You can read it here. And you see here also Nice, and Monaco, you know, all the, the elite are, it's all part of Savoy. And also Geneva was part of the Duchy of Savoy. And also Nice in France next to Monaco. All these favorite places for the elite of our pharaonic masters of the nobility. Therefore, the killer prince of Savoy got acquitted in several French courts while the young German expired in the hospital of Nice of the Duchy of Savoy, murdered by its descendant and here it says dirk hammer while dying in ease 1970.
78. This is an original picture. The French police in Corsica had all the proofs disappear. And by the way, the Corsican people themselves consider the French police as their enemy who occupy their island. So here you see the French police in Corsica. And here it says the killer prince of Savoy. There he is. And here his victim, only 19 years old. From the picture in the Netflix video, the prince's murder weapon was a US Army World War II M1 carbine, caliber 30, 7.62 times 33 millimeters, with a very high stopping power, far greater than an M16 or M4. The M1 is a real one shot, one kill weapon, which the killer prince must have known as each and every member of the nobility loves hunting. So here it says, the father of the killer prince hunting elephants. So here we see the same guy we just saw standing with Mussolini and Hitler and Himmler and Rudolf Hess, the King Victor Emmanuel III of Italy. They know all about rifle stopping powers and the, uh, the M1 carbine with which they hunted a human. And yes, they love hunting humans too, like this young German in his sleep. Pharaoh's nobility stand above all laws and always get acquitted. Like the rapist Prince Andrew, who you can see here, and many others, like his pal Jeffrey Epstein, whom you can see here. For which, therefore, when the nobility created the horizontal New World Order by their Knights Templars, it needed a neutral base where they could escape to in case of danger. Just as it says here, Swiss neutrality is for the elite only and not for you, you, you dumb slaves. Which is exactly what the killer prince Victor Emmanuel IV did and flew to Kstad in Switzerland, where he got full protection by the Swissies, just like Roman Pedolansky, who also fled to Kstad, just like the Sackler family, the Oxycontin manufacturers, also in Kstad, and whose opiates murdered two million young Americans, and many Russian oligarchs like Dmitry Ribolovlev, a mutual friend of both Mr. Putin and Donald Trump. And Donald Trump sold him a $95 million palace in Palm Day Beach, Florida. And they're all hiding in Stad and many, many more pharaonic criminals. So here it says, the killer prince in Kstad, Switzerland. So this is a picture where he was a lot younger, apparently. I mean, look at the hair. And this looks like him just right after the murder or at the same time, you know. So he went permanently to Kstad in Switzerland. Switzerland. You know, 
Uh, so here he is after the murder. He's got nothing to fear, you know, because Switzerland is Pharaoh's base. And they all seem to be in the nest of Stad. You know, with Bedolansky, Russian oligarchs, the Sackler family, and the rest of them. Eh? Uh, nothing to worry about, eh? This is the typical Swiss neutrality, which is only for Pharaoh's elite. <sighs> and not for you, you know, the dumb slaves. It's like the American um, humorist once said, it's a big club and you ain't in it. So I went to Kstad, here's it, Kstad, uh, 10 years ago. And here's the title, Roman Pedolansky. So I went filming, um, I filmed this, his house and, you know, and some other stuff there. So it's on my channel, Gatsafrats, so if you want to see that. And here is my video on the Sackler family from the US who manufactured OxyContin and who also went to Stad. It seems they're all in Stad in Switzerland. So here's the title and here's the channel. And here's the Russian oligarch Dmitry Ribolovlev here to the left and his good friend Donald Trump. And this guy here, Trump, sold him this palace in Palm Beach, Florida for almost $100 million to this guy. And this guy is also living in Kstad in Switzerland. And he's also a good friend of Mr. Putin. So he's big time in the Kremlin report, considering the um, Trump's business with the Ruskies. So Dimitri here, who's living in Kstad, uh, here you can see his badge. He's also the owner of the most important French soccer club. I think Monaco is number one in the in the the, uh, the major league in France. Or I'm not into soccer. Maybe it's number two or three. Here it says AS Monaco and a crown, of course. And this guy is in Kstad. And uh, Monaco was uh, a part or next to the um, the Duchy of Savoy. And there's the Swiss connection again with Monaco and, um, and Kstad, Switzerland. And of course, they're all, it's all nobility. This one, this, this one too, I've, I've proven that to you from his mother's side. He's from a line of... Um, Scandinavian uh, kings and monarchs. He's related to the, the Queen of Denmark and the King of Norway, Trump is. And he see the Russian church and all this. I never understood why he's a hero for the American workers, uh, you know, as apparently this guy, he's playing in a completely different league than in the, uh, the workers' league, eh? So I really don't get it. And here you can see Trump's pal Dmitry Ribolovlev on the left, standing together with Prince Albert of the Principality of Monaco that used to have a Swiss guard in former times. So here you can see the ASMFC, that's the soccer club. FC, it means football club, M is from Monaco. And I think AS could be uh, Associa Association Sportive uh, in French. And it's all red and white, Templar's colors. And it has a crown, of course. You know, they're all pharaohs. This is a pharaoh, this is a pharaoh. And here it says Monaco. Yeah. And it's all, they're all hide their money in Switzerland. Uh, he's living in Kstad. So here you can read about Dmitry Ribolovlev. I didn't read the whole thing, but, uh, you know. Um, 
So I'm going down here. Yeah, it's about AS Monaco. Yeah, that's what it says. Association de football in France. Um, this guy is extremely rich. And here it talks about the Panama paper scandal. And he's also in the uh, the Swiss, uh, Swiss Secret, which um, the scandal started in 2022. Also, this German newspaper, Süddeutsche Zeitung, or I think it was Deutsche Südwest Zeitung, um, which triggered the, um, the Ukraine war. I already told you about it in my videos. Here, the United States. Uh, he owns apartments in the Central Park. And in 2008, Ekaterina Ribolevlev's trust bought the 18-bedroom Maison de l'Amitié in Palm Beach, Florida, from the American businessman Donald Trump. So 2008, that's in the middle of the economic uh, crisis, right? Eh? where Americans, they lost their houses. You know, this guy is just buying houses for $100 million. He also bought a house from um, in Hawaii from the actor Will Smith. Oh, I don't want to see you. Go away. And um, everywhere. And here's he, he's in Switzerland. He has a house, $135 million in Kstadt. He also has a house in Geneva. I know, the guy has houses all over the planet. Uh, philanthropy, yes, of course, yes. That's what Freemasons always do, yeah. I suppose there's some things for children as usual. Probably, right? I hear Prince's Grace Hospital Center. A lot of kiddies there. It's always the same. So here you can see again how Kstad is being written. G-S-T-A-A-D. I put just a hyphen here, so normally in the word there's no hyphen, okay? So just to make you know that um, how it's been written, like, you know, and why they're all hiding, like the killer prince here. So even when speaking German, you'll break your tongue over the pronouncing of Kstad, which is not really German, and with no less than three consonants following each other up, a G, an S, and a T, Kst, more sounding like the neighbor's wife calling her cat in the evening, Kst, 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 Kst. Come, kitty, kitty, kitty. Kss, 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 kss. Kss, kss, kss. So here it says, kss, 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 kss. Oh, there you are. Kstad. You naughty cat. You were hiding in Kstad again after you killed the bird, didn't you? Kst, kss, 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 you naughty bastard. Hiding in Kstad, Switzerland's neutral base for Pharaoh only. Kitty, 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 Kstad. And written in nice lapis lazuli color, as it should be. Here it says, Bastard in Kstad. Pharaoh's base. In the Alps, out of where they rule over humanity and where all the assassins hide and get full protection by the Swiss Nazi Templars of Octagon. Kstad, come, kitty, kitty, we know where you are. So, I propose to make it easier on us to call it Gestadt, meaning G-Town, where G 
stands for Freemasons, as in their square and compass logo with a G in the middle, and Stadt for town in German, written slightly different but phonetically absolutely the same. Gestadt or G town, the Freemason town protecting all their big time hotshot pharaonic criminals. So here is the name of the town again where they're all hiding. Kstadt, you remember Kitty Kitty? Kstadt, which means actually in German because they're all towns, you know, and over the time it's being written differently, like in the Middle Ages or, you know. So Stadt, it's definitely Stadt. You know, that's why they had to pull this difficult thing, you know, like three consonants, G-S-T, which is, you, you, you never find this in German, you know. It's not German. So it definitely means G-Stadt, G-Stadt which means G-Town in English. And that makes perfectly sense, doesn't it now? So this is the Swiss neutrality, which is not for us, the slaves, but for our pharaonic masters only, to provide them a place of security where they can hide or have peace talks amongst each other in Geneva or Davos, when two ruling pharaohs or two nations have a dispute which they would like to settle. So here it says, Swiss neutrality swindle. And here you can see the killer prince again, right after he murdered a young man. For us, the normal people, there's nothing whatsoever where Switzerland is an absolute dictatorship where they can do with you whatever they want without any law protecting you and in a country where the local Swiss population are trained to protect their masters, to protect the Swiss banks and to protect all Geneva's NGOs like the Red Cross, the WEF, the United Nations, the World Economic Forum and the rest of Pharaoh's world governing organizations. This is the true essence of Swiss neutrality which is for the masters only and here it says swiss neutrality is for the elite only and not for you dumb slaves so in the picture it says here templar safe house 1291 in octagon in the swiss mountains and as they were forbidden in france they changed their the Templar flag into this here, which is also the um, uh, the cross of the Hospitallers, which is a white cross on a red underground because the Hospitallers, they took all the belongings of the Knights Templars legally. So, and when the Knights Templars set up the new system in 1291, which they called the New World Order, they needed a secure place for all of Pharaoh's nobility to feel secure, like a safe house for the royal house or Per A of Pharaoh, where they can go skiing in winter, do some tax evasion, or put their pharaonic offspring in a super rich boarding school. In Pharaoh's Utopia, the Swiss beast, home of the devil. Here, of course, you see Prince Andrew, 
And here it says, Prince Andrew owns a £17 million sterling chalet, skiing chalet in Switzerland. Here you can see it. So apparently there are a lot of elite sexual predators roaming around in Switzerland, like Prince Andrew, uh, Pedolansky in Stad. This one here is in Verbier, which is also in Switzerland. And I suppose um, among the Russian oligarchs, there are quite a few sexual predators as well. I suppose it might be uh, honest to say that we might assume that, eh? The Swiss beast, home of the devil, where Pharaoh's nobility have their perfect slaves, called the Swissies who are trained like a German shepherd police dog, ready to kill and murder for their pharaonic masters, where the Germanic, Alemannic tribe was the first Germanic tribe to collaborate with the Roman Empire, whereas other Germanic tribes, like the Frisians or the Saxons, never collaborated with Rome. And here it says, Swiss watchdogs for the elite, and how they are protecting Davos and the WEF World Economic Forum. And one of those Germanic Frisians who never collaborated with the new Rome was the father of that young German Dirk Hammer, murdered by the Prince of Savoy in 1978. His name was Reiki Geert Hammer, which is a Frisian name, although he was born in another part of Germany. So I suppose by his name that he was of Frisian origin. Reiki Geert Hammer was a medical doctor, a physician, who practiced over 25 years owning several clinics. But when his son Dirk Hammer got murdered by the killer prince, he developed testicular cancer because of the trauma of a father losing his child. He then developed cancer studies based upon trauma triggering cancer and a new form of healing, which he called the new dramatic medicine. So here's the man. It says Dr. Reiki Geert Hammer of the new Germanic medicine. Then the Swiss said that his cancer treatment was no good, which brought him the Swiss terror upon him and his family, culminating into years and years into various European prisons until he finally died in 2017. So here you can read about Dr. Hammer. And here it says the Swiss Cancer League described Hammer's approach as dangerous, especially as it lulls the patients into a false sense of security so that they are deprived of other effective, effective treatments. So here you can read about him, about his life here. And... Uh, About the Germanic new medicine, it says he died. Um, I don't know this is about his son Dirk, who died in 1978 by the the Prince of of Savoy. There he is. Um, I, I I might show you here the um, about him as well at the same time, so you can read about it. He was also a member of the P2, Propaganda Due, very dangerous Freemason organization. Um, that says Masonic Charter. 
I might want to go down a little bit here. There it is. Uh, Propaganda Due was a Masonic lodge founded in 1877. Oh. Uh, the Grand Orient of Italy. Why, why the Orient? I mean, we are in Europe. I mean, what's the Orient got to do here? You know, we're being governed completely by the Orient, completely invaded. You know. So here it says he was the son of the last king of Italy and the Duke of Savoy, well, etc., etc. You can see again, it's it's really it's a royal house, eh? Oh, there's more. Yeah, there he is. And they were exiled, you know, they couldn't stay in Italy because of the... Uh, and uh, I'd already told you about this, the House of Bourbon, Two Sicilies. When I made that video about the... Uh, uh, about the Mafia in, uh, in Sicily. Yeah, it's about Dirk Hammer's death. He never spent a day in prison, you know. And here he got imprisoned again in 2006 because of corruption and being with the mafia. And uh, there was a, a microphone in the prison where he admitted to have murdered uh, Dirk Hammer. But yet, he never went a day in prison, eh? Well, how is this possible? Hey, eh, Swissy? So here we're back at the uh, Dr. Hammer Wikipedia. Uh, we were here, the Germanic New Medicine. Uh, here it says somewhere how he went to prison. Oh, yeah, here. Hammer's license to practice medicine was revoked in 1986 by a court judgment, which was reconfirmed in 2003. As he continued to practice, Hammer was investigated uh, several times over allegations of malpractice. This guy was a doctor, a physician, you know, a doctor in medicine. He had several clinics. Uh, he also did some um, inventions here, which you can read here somewhere. Uh, he was jailed for 12 months in Germany from 1997 to 98 and served the prison term from September 2004 to February 2006 in Fleury-Mérogy in France on counts of fraud and unlicensed practice of medicine. Yeah. Well, of course, he didn't fraud. Just had a new way of healing people what the, um, the, um, the, the lobby in Switzerland of the, um, the pharmaceutical lobby didn't really like. And this is why the Swissies, you know, yeah, response by medical authorities. The Swiss Cancer League of the Swiss Society for Oncology, Swiss Society for Medical Oncology and Swiss Institute for Applied Cancer Receipts say that no case of a cancer cure by Hammer has been published in the medical lit literature nor any studies in specialized journals, reports in his book lack the additional data that are essential for medical assessment and the presentations of his investigations at medical conferences are scientifically unconvincing. Well, why did the Swissies do that? And later on, I come back to this here, what happened here. But first, why did the Swissies do this? Why did Swissy do this? Well, remember that the two biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world are the Swiss Roche in Basel and the Swiss Novartis also in Basel, Switzerland, who of course saw their sales diminishing because of Dr. Hammer's natural Germanic medicine to treat cancer. Here it says Novartis is number two, Roche, number one. And right after the pandemic, Novartis could buy back 52 billion euros or dollars, which is almost the same, to Roche. And they actually are one in the same company. So they made billions of billions of dollars through the, uh, the corona pandemic. Pharaoh's poison 
pandemic. And they got very, very, very rich because of it. And right after the pandemic, Novartis could buy back $52 billion to Roche of the, of the shares. So they're actually, they're in the same town. It's one in the same company. Only Novartis takes all the risks and Roche is the head company, which is very strategically. So it says the world's two biggest pharmaceutical companies are both in Switzerland. Well, this is technically impossible. How is it possible? This tiny, tiny country that the two biggest pharmaceutical companies are both in Switzerland. Technically, this is impossible, you know. So there's something fishy going on. Yeah, I already told you about it. What's really going on? So here you can see it, Novartis. This is the one, it's one company, Novartis and Roche, you know. Officially, there are two, but, and this is the one taking all the risks. So here you can see this. Bloomberg, Novartis to pay, to pay 390 million to settle US kickback case. Novartis hit by scandal over Japanese drug studies, probes, uncover altered research data. Swiss giants stand by heart medicine, Diavan. Financial Times, Novartis faces potential South Korea sales ban. Prosecutors seek suspension of some medicines sold by Swiss Group amid illegal rebates probe. Uh, Reuters, Business News. I mean, this is old. Look to 2015. Uh, you know, it's still going on. US seeks up to 3.35 billion in Novartis kickback suit. And I showed you in a video how they did um, medical experiments on uh, on Polish homeless. Uh, there were, I think, there were twenty three who died. Really, they died, you know. But I mean, a Polish homeless is not an elite in Kstat, you know. So uh, it's just collateral damage. Yeah, they are highly criminal, you know. And they did the same thing with their banks. It was Credit Suisse taking all the risk. And the UBS, you know, the, that's the, the big bank. And and we saw it this year, the Credit Suisse, they, um, the CS, they um, they fell, they don't exist anymore. And it went over into um, um, UBS, which means the United Banksters of Switzerland. Yeah, They always do the same. They're, they're so sly. And of course, you should go and see this video here, Corona Gate. It's not mine, but it's very good. Uh, Big Pharma, Switzerland, and organized crime. And I I made a couple of uh, a few hour videos about the um, the Swiss pharmaceutical industries and how they killed uh, Polish homeless, you know, for their experiments. And they're probably in one of my channels, and so. You go and look them up uh, yourself. Uh, you know, I made more than a thousand videos and it's all a bit hard to find. Um, so you go and look at that. And remember that the same Swissies protected the killer of Hammer's son in Kstad, the G town, while at the same time discrediting his father and even put him in prison. So the father of the victim went to prison. The killer prince never went to prison. And the father went to prison because of the Swiss cancer organization. And this guy never went to prison because he went to Switzerland in Kstad. So the Swissies are all behind it, you know, from, as always as always. And as Hammer was a physician and not an historian, he blamed the usual scapegoat for it all, the jaywalkers, where in fact his real tormentors were Swissy and Pharaoh's nobility, the usual suspects. So here it says in Wikipedia, what I've shown you before, here was about the Swiss Cancer League and all that, remember? So here it says, the, um, the Jaywalker conspiracy theory 
Hammer purported that his method is a Germanic alternative to mainstream clinical medicine, which he claimed as part of a jaywalker conspiracy to decimate the non-jaywalkers. In this, Hammer repeated the um, anti-jaywalker claims of Nazi physician Gerhard Wagner, another Wagner, eh? like the Wagner group. More precisely, Hammer asserted that chemotherapy and morphine are used to mass murder Western civilization. Well, they've got other tools as well, eh? While such treatment is not used in the jaywalker base, or how do they call it, the JJ base. Hammer promoted the idea that most German oncologists are jaywalkers and that no jaywalker is treated with chemotherapy in Germany, which is probably because of religious reasons, right? And, uh, well, etc., etc. You can read it yourself. And of course, you know, if I have to use the the word jaywalker, I've got nothing against these people, not at all. But uh, because of the censorship, as usual, as, uh, as soon as you use the other name or the J the JJ Bays or whatever, you know, they take off your video by the machines. We are in a technocratic era, and it's full of censorship. So I'm forced to do this. And there's a lot of jaywalkers who visit my videos and who understand this. And um, so, of course, the ones who give the jaywalkers a bad name are the jaywalker nobility, you know, uh, just like uh, the um, Herman Herman de German, he he was he grew up in a castle of a Jay Walker um, aristocrat. You know, I sh I show you the picture right after. So, but these are the usual suspects, you know, Switzerland and Pharaoh's nobility, and of course there also is a Jay Walker nobility. Who always give a bad name to the rest of the jaywalkers, which the jaywalkers call the Erev Rava. So this is the sad thing about it all. So here's that picture again of Hermann the German, and he grew up in a castle of the jaywalker nobility. He, his name was also Hermann. I forgot his last name, but I made a video about it somewhere, and he he. He grew up in the castle of, I think, was Weldenstein, and he was the owner. He lived there as well. So it's all nobility. This is nobility. This is nobility. I shouldn't say Hermann the German because he wasn't really. You know, look, it's all Templar stuff here. Here, Templars. It's all over. And this is the Seal of Solomon. It's also of the of Pharaoh. And the nobility has nothing to do with the, with the normal jaywalkers. You know. But the jaywalkers don't understand. They, they don't even understand their own history. They don't. They really don't. Not even their priests. Well, they in the least, you know. I feel that Dr. Hammer was a good man who wanted to do good to humanity and that we should help those sidetracked Germans and others so they won't lose their time and energy on the usual scapegoat and in the future will direct their energy and good intentions on the real enemy of mankind because there are good people who are unfortunately sidetracked through disinformation who need our help to pierce through the veil. Swissy is always in it, somehow, and the Swiss neutrality is only for the elite of Pharaoh's nobility and not for us, their slaves. And their G-town, Gstad, seems to be a nest for the biggest criminals of Pharaoh's organized crime. Swaziland is the base of Pharaoh. Ain't that so, 
Swiss E. For those who haven't seen my previous videos, here I explain in two Brightian films all the code words I use to avoid censorship. So here is part one entitled Censorship Vocabulary and here part two Forbidden Words. On my channel on Brighton, which you can see here, brighton.com, uh, my channel is this one, Gure, and then the second one, Gure. And for those new to my channel who don't understand how I got to um, the, the, the Faro connection and the, uh, the Templar connection to Switzerland, so in the Swiss B series, which you can see here, I explain how we're being ruled by Pharaoh. Here you can see part one, and there are 11 parts. So this is part one here. Here's the title on my channel, Gure here, the same channel. And if you watch here, in the description underneath the video, it says more. And here you got part two, part three, with the uh, the URL, and part nine, part ten. Only part eleven I haven't put it in it yet, but eleven is also on the same channel here. So it says the new words, or there's a conspiracy theory that hypothesizes. I should write it with an S, boys, not with a Z. A secretly emerging totalitarian world government. It's not a conspiracy theory, as I explained to you. It's a very old thing by the Knights Templars when they founded Switzerland in 1291. They made the horizontal rule and called it the New World Order. And the Old World Order is the old vertical feudal rule by the king. So... And this was, um, it's in German, uh, about how I got uh, arrested again and again by an anti-terrorist court. And finally, I wish to express my sincere condolences to the Hammer family.